This is our <clears throat> this is our 2002 Porsche 911. It's a 996 uh, six speed. It is a Targa. Uh, we got this in 2021, sort of by accident. Um, I was bidding on an auction site and I bid my highest amount and I thought the car would go for thousands more and it didn't. <laughs> and so, yeah, mine was the highest bid. So that's, uh, that's how it got here. I'm very happy it did. I've, uh, I only got it to find out what all the fuss was about with Porsche 911s. Um, the way they hold their value and have such a devoted following, etc. and so on. And um, I quickly found out the car is a delight to drive. It is um, nimble, it's fast. Uh, this one's even faster. Um, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Uh, the um, practicality is completely out the window from any other sort of a two-seat type sports car. It's in, in, in eminently practical, and I guess the all-wheel drivers is even more so, uh, which this one is not. Um, and uh, it's just it's just wonderful car. It's uh, has the the nine nine sixes. I'm not going to tell you all about everything that they have in the way of. Uh, weak points, the uh, IMS and the OR scoring and the whole thing, you can read about that at lots of places. Um, I'm going to turn this other light on here. There we go. Um, but uh, I had that taken care of. So this is a um, this is a 100,000 mile car. It was, it was right at 100,000 when I bought it. Now it has 114,000 because I drive a car. Um, it's uh, uh, one of the things that uh, the hated uh, headlights. Um, this is one of the reasons that this car was uh, roundly disliked uh, when it came out. Uh, this is a uh, Mark II, the original cars, uh, nine, or dot two. So it's a 996.2, the 996.1s. Um, the headlights were, uh, did, they didn't have this little hump here and they just came kind of right right across like that and this turn signal down here was orange and they called them fried eggs headlights and they despised them. The uh, turbo got headlights like this and these were disliked a bit less but um, uh, then when they came out with the dot two uh, it also got the uh, turbo style headlights. I I don't mind them. I mean, I I get why people like say the 997 better. It you know I'd say the 997 is a prettier car from the front, but otherwise it's about the same. Uh, let's see what else from the outside. This is a okay. This is uh, this is a car. The color it's a little hard to tell in here. Maybe I should have had it outside, but it's polar silver. Polar silver is a blue, uh, has a blue undertone. Um, on, uh, the Arctic silver is the real common one you'll see. And um, that has like a gray undertone. Uh, so it's a light silver with a gray undertone. This is a light silver with a blue undertone. Oh yeah, I had the spoiler up, sticking up because uh, I was washing the car. So that's a speed um, sensitive spoiler when the car hits 70 miles an hour, I think. It automatically extends um, and then uh, retracts when the car gets below 45. Um, you can also manually put it up with a little lever, a little button inside, which is what I did so I could wash stuff. Um, it's a Targa. And Targa, if you look here, this is where you can really tell when, when it's a Targa. This, this window comes to a point. Um, if the coupes, this will be this will be a rounded section in here. Um, the Targa is a it's a roof assembly. Uh, right there is a seam, and it comes off. Uh, it comes up to the front, um, and comes all the way down to here. So it's an assembly that a company makes, and then they send them a Porsche, and Porsche plops them on top of the car. So it's a cabriolet chassis and then this is the Targa top. So Targa in this vintage um, means a glass roof. This is a glass panel here. 
and the whole glass panel slides back. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then the other cool thing about this vintage is that this back window is, is a hatch, it opens. And um, the 996 and 997 Porsches, Targas are the only Porsches that have an opening back window. All the rest of them you have to crawl through behind the seat to get the stuff uh, back in the back of the car. So that's pretty neat. Um, these are Carrera two wheels. They're my favorites. One of the reasons I like the car and was willing to bid on it. Um, the other reason was the Targa. I, I, I just made the most sense to me. Uh, and it really is a practical car. Uh, let's see, what else about the outside? The, uh, these uh, side skirts down here. These are the aero side skirts from the 996.1 car. So those are 996.1 side skirts. Um, you'll see, I think it's something they did to Targas. They put those sides, I, they probably had a bunch left over after they were done with the dot ones. And they thought, what are we gonna do with these? And so they put them on the Targa. They, they, uh, they, they aimed the Targa at the, you know, sort of the, the um, professional level of individual, like uh, lawyers and doctors and I don't know what else. Um, and, uh, you know, not, not as much, a little more GT, a little less sports car type of thing. And maybe they thought that, you know, dressed it up a little bit. I don't know. So, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do this one in bits rather than try and stretch everything together. So we'll break here and then I'll, uh, play with the roof. How about that? Well, we'll just we'll go, go through the interior a little bit then play with the roof. I think I mentioned uh, practicality earlier. So I'm going to walk up here. I pop the hood, slide my finger under there. So that just pop that little red latch. And presto, I've got a giant cavern of an opening in here. You can see I do shopping with the car. There's my junk in here. Get my shopping gear out of the way. You can see there's a very big hole in the front of the car. And it's massive. And it goes all the way down. I mean, there's nothing. There's a little piece of carpeting, and then that's it. So that's the front spare tire, an actual tire in there, and jack and everything to change it. Uh, that's a CD changer, which doesn't work anywhere because I made some changes to the uh, to, to add a uh, Bluetooth interface. Um, let's see, the battery's under there. It's the charger connection. That's brake fluid. This is... Uh, Washer fluid back here. Um, not a lot more to see. Let me get that up there. This I need to get a new shroud. Mine's uh, old and tattered, uh, but it's uh, very basic. These headlights that everybody complains about have an interesting feature. You uh, take just pull this panel down on the side here, and you put a tool in there, and you turn it one quarter turn. And the entire headlight just slides right out, just slides right out this way. The entire thing is an assembly. No wires connected, no nothing. It just comes out, you can put it on the bench. Same with this one. They both they come out in and out easily. That was one of the things that uh, Porsche did to simplify manufacturing and to streamline things, and it's brilliant. And they continued to do that up until, I think, the 992, which is the latest one, 20, I don't know when they came out. Uh, or the 991. One, one of those two, they didn't do it anymore. So that great idea has gone by the wayside. That's pretty neat, I think. Let's see, other outside stuff. Um, well, let's show you the one of the Targa's most fabulous party tricks. I popped this open already. Uh, the opening rear window. Ta-da! <laughs> Look at that. That is nifty. And it was a feature I wanted and uh, wasn't going to buy a car that didn't have it. And so I got a Targa. Uh, the seats fold down in there. And you've got storage here. Mm, there we go. Seat folds down. Now you got even more storage. It's uh, commodious back here. It's a lot of space. Um, now why wouldn't you want this in all Porsches? I don't know. I don't think it would affect them structurally to have a window that opened. Have a window that opened uh, because you still have the framing around it. So I, I don't get it. But anyway, there's party trick uh, 
the great part, the great target party trick. Um, oh, and interestingly, a the 996, which ran from the Targa, uh, was only in the 996.2, so they ran from 2002 to 2004. And they were uh, two-wheel drive. I think you could get uh, Targa 4, so that would have been an all-wheel drive. Uh, but it, you could get a Carrera Targa, which is two-wheel drive, with an opening rear window. So if you wanted all that stuff, my neighbor picked this time to mow his grass, okay. <laughs> um, if you wanted all that stuff, if you wanted a two-wheel drive Porsche Targa with that opening rear window, you must buy a 996. It's the only one. The 997s also have the, the opening rear window. In fact, the roof might be identical. Um, I actually put a sunshade on this one uh, from a 997, and it was a, you know, it's an exact fit. Uh, but um, the 997 targets were all uh, fours. They were, they were all uh, all-wheel drive. Couldn't get a uh, two-wheel drive one. So this is a pretty unique uh, vehicle in that re regard. And uh, finally, let's, let's do the motor here. So, I told you I'd say some things about power. This car, not that you can see much. Oh, there's still water from when I washed it. Um, not a lot to see in here. If you've seen Porsches, I mean, the newer ones, you can't see anything whatsoever. They do have an engine cover, but all it does is uncover the place to put the antifreeze, uh, and you still can't see the motor. This is... Uh, Okay, so the so the, the uh, 996 is infamous for the four scoring and uh, IMS bearing failures, and they have some other weaknesses. Well, there's a there's an outfit called uh, Flat Six Innovations in Georgia that uh, rebuilds motors and takes care of all that stuff. And a guy named Jake Raby runs it, and I had this motor done, and while it was they were doing that. Um, I had them bore it out to four liters and do some other things so that it's more powerful. So now I have a, you know, much more bulletproof, bombproof motor with four liters and more power and torque. And it is really, the torque is great. Um, one of the things I did to uh, help that new motor is I put a, uh, this air box is out of a 997.1 Porsche. Uh, that uh, 3.8 liter, so uh, they um, they, uh, they they came with a 3.6 and a 3.8, and this this was the 3.8 air box. Uh, there's a guy that makes these little logos, these chrome stuff, or I guess it's like a brushed uh, metal strip here, steel, I guess. And I don't know if you can see that, but he, this one says 4.0. I got that from him so that it was appropriately marked for my 4.0 engine. Um, the underside uh, video, you'll see there's a, a stage two uh, oil sump on there, which adds a little bit of oil capacity and looks cool. And then I sprang for a flat six oil cap so that people say, hey, what's that for? And I'll tell them. So that's the, that's the engine compartment, not a lot to see. Um, it's crowded, um, they're very crowded, but everything that turns, that, and every sensor and everything else was replaced while the engine was out. There's a lot of new things in there. This is uh, the uh, uh, um, antifreeze uh, reservoir, and they're famous for cracking and leaking, so that's brand new, much easier to change when the engine's not in the way. Um, new starter, new alternator, new, 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 new. Lots of new stuff. Power steering pump. So hopefully I can just drive the car. That was the point. I intend to drive this car, take it on trips, and really enjoy it. And that's why I did all that. So that's the uh, power plant of this car.